most of the videos i do is on sanatana dharma so if they are insulting the video it it means they are insulting my dharma what is the importance of bindi first of all i see it as a beautiful thing i don't know why we have to justify that in the first place like why should i justify wearing a bindi first thing is to believe in these rituals rather than having the mindset oh i will do it only if it's scientifically proved i'll do it only if uh, somebody somebody gives a reason when it comes to the western culture we accept it as is we don't even question but when it comes to sanatan dharma we need a scientific proof we need a, a psychological proof who's your favorite deity do you do upavasa do you remove bindi while you are dressed in jeans which is your favorite character what's your favorite movie your favorite god comes in front of you what is the one question you'll ask veg biryani veg pulao <laughs> that's a good answer <laughs>
from there to now which is common when i speak normally to my kid i can speak to her in a in a language which she understands and she is okay with it what changed in life is it right thing which been told or people also have this facts or myths or whatever that menstruation blood is bad and you should it's a you know don't touch them kind of thing were they earlier in sanatan dharma or did you feel that when you found it my views on this were completely different i thought these rituals makes no sense these are all superstitious or something which came up over the time until i i read this book called ritu vidya by sinu joseph oh my god the amount of research she has done she's like goddess almost in that by while reading the book i felt like my god who is this woman she's come to you know break these taboos that we have on the taboos <laughs> you know after reading ritu vidya i understood why these rituals hold such an important significance even today i think that's why we have to read that book not only women every person every human being has to read that book and just to understand why there were so many restrictions actually it's not restrictions it those were the uh, warnings you, you might say warnings or prescription to follow when we are when we are uh, so for example why when we had corona if so, if a person had corona we would like uh, send him in a separate room not talk to him is it discrimination it's not that's the same thing here also it has such a scientific uh, meaning to every ritual so rather than me talking about it everyone should read the book before commenting any women who has not read that book and still you know uh, uh, want to backslash on our ancestors i don't take it read that book try to understand if they, even after that if you feel it's not correct then it's a different issue but uh, after reading that book in fact i start before i have also a modern women i will like oh, why should i not go to kitchen i let me go to kitchen i started following everything that has to be followed for menstruation and it it has cha- it you it it used to impact my menstruation cycle in a very positive way whatever experience i had before reading that book and implementing things was completely different if you see our sanatana dharma the importance given to women is immense we celebrate our first menstruation if it was a taboo why would they do it in the first place so it's it was not uh, restrictions however because of uh, knowledge gap we did be after invasions we were not taught in uh, gurukula system where they would tell why these things are follow we were don't be educated in in a western point of view so that's the reason our ancestors like last two generation don't know the reason behind this but still they knew that it's, it's very important to follow that's why they were like oh no don't do this don't do that it's not out of uh, hate or anything it's out of concern yeah. wonderful the first menstruation festival which you said is like beautiful mm-hmm. that's something which we always uh, think right why are we celebrating this secret like generally it is supposed to be like uh, taboo and don't thing but you celebrate that very much telling a ma- woman has come to puberty that's like odd right to, to hear itself is looks uh, eek but they celebrated it in a very very beautiful way and saying she has become the real woman if we can call it that people actually say that so good uh, i think it's pretty good that way and when you talked about the parents didn't know that time and they were like okay uh, let me enforce it or let me inf- enforce it i may not be able to tell the reason i'm sure there are few followers of you who are like first time watchers of things and they suddenly saw your uh, let's say rangoli thing which you told and i would like to do it but i don't know how to and i'm pretty old i can't even ask my mom because my mom is very old mm-hmm. so women at let's say 40 30 40 who like to do it they are shy to do it so can you tell some starting basic things which they can do like without losing their ego saying oh my god if some i go to my mother at 70 and ask her can i do this then she'll say first time only i'm telling you you didn't do that now <laughs> and now you are coming and doing 
<laughs> so what are the simple things which they can start so first thing is to believe in these rituals rather than having the mindset oh i will do it only if it's scientifically proved i'll do it only if uh, somebody somebody gives a reason do before doing that believe in that if you if you have faith in that some day the truth will come to you if you have great intentions if it is meant to be it will definitely come so believe in these rituals first and the moment uh, your grandmother say grandmother or mother says to do something don't cancel it thinking oh she is uneducated that's why she is saying they are more educated they are more modern they are more open than any of our generation kids so believe in what they're saying if they're giving such importance to uh, a, a particular thing it should be it should have worked they must have seen it working for a lot of women that's why they're saying experience is better than knowledge right experience comes and then everything else so if that's if they're vouching on something they should definitely believe that so i'll i'll give you an example uh once in a while when when i feel very creative or uh, no out of nowhere i would bring all the uh, drawing sheets greeting cards and start doing some origami art my mother would get pissed off first learn rangoli first learn mehndi these are essentials then only learn these things i was like oh she is too mean minded or narrow minded to think uh, one art form is better than other but if you see like this is th- that nothing matches the the power of rangoli so so your mother and grandmother can never be wrong they can never be wrong they always go, have good intention so believe in them believe in the what they say first and then you can start anywhere if if you if we want to start something it will happen like something will fall in place and 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 uh, with the amount of exposure we have in social media it's it's like a cake walk you can learn anything at any point of time there are workshops going on everywhere there are tutorials on youtube and uh, i think parents will be happy rather than thinking like oh she didn't do it <laughs> when i told she's doing after seeing the video they'll be like okay at least she's doing uh, uh, after this so yeah good so the other twist i would like to give for example the kids now let's say the women are around 40 45 the kids would be teens normally so the kids are exposed to the world which is like seen too much so much of westernized mm-hmm. simple example is the bindi mm-hmm. now let's say the women have never worn bindi because of the influence suddenly the twist came in sanatan dharma influence very happy but now to wear bindi i'm little thing because my kid will start making fun of me so especially the bindi part you know uh, we've been listening about lot about what is the importance of bindi and there are n number of videos which told about the agna chakra mm-hmm. and all but if you go and tell agna chakra and all to the teenage kid like oh, what the hell is what <laughs> they'll say i don't know why they wear that accent comes from but yeah uh, so what do you say especially about bindi if you have if you want to tell the current woman and the teenage woman what is the importance of bindi first of all i see it as a beautiful thing i don't know why we have to justify that in the first place like why should i justify wearing a bindi you know in uh, uh, in in the places where i come from if we don't wear a bindi they're like why are you looking like a mohini <laughs> that's the that's the first reaction they have and that's what it is like it, it's so beautiful right i don't know why why everything which comes to indian traditions should be backed up with some scientific evidence and all that i don't know in the that's <laughs> it's really sad uh, but also they say right the, 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 this is where the agna chakra uh, resides and every time when when we press it's it's kind of activating activating the chakra and uh, and and also when when something is um if we put a kumkuma or something it holds the energy that's flowing out of the body people who who can believe that they can believe if they don't want to you can't convince them so let it be but what we can do for kids is let them believe that indian culture comes first and everything else comes next but having said that unless and until our education system changes 
it's not going to be easy because every all the parents are working they can't be like uh, sitting and uh, doing some research on traditions and uh, educating the kids so the foundation level has to be strong the if, if we change the education system i think automatically everything changes wonderful one point i really loved is somehow we are obliged or like obliged to justify everything eh? <laughs> right. when it comes to the western culture we accept it as is we don't even question but when it comes to sanatan dharma we need a scientific proof we need a, a psychological proof we need a, every other proof i think i don't know when will we come out of that but i think i'll add one thing to that uh, so i had made a video on holi what is the science behind holi holi comes in the month of march when india experiences the seasonal shift from winter to summer during this time risk of bacterial growth is high in both human body and in the atmosphere here is how our ancestors dealt with it number 1 holika dahan this is a practice of participating in the bonfire that is set a day before holi fire helps to kill the bacterial growth inside the body and in the atmosphere number 2 colors played in holi unlike today Our ancestors made colors from turmeric, flowers, and herbs. The medicinal and antibacterial properties present in them help to deal with the bacteria. Every festival in India has science behind it, and we must follow the rituals without weakening them to our needs. But unfortunately, today youth indulge in alcohol during Holi, which takes away the purpose of this festival. Every time I try to correlate modern theories with the Indian traditions, they are like, "Oh, this is not full field. This is all fake." and uh this makes no sense and all that uh first of all there are there is no institute or somebody uh some scientist some hundred scientists sitting and uh, trying to prove our indian traditions all we can do is correlate the existing research papers or or uh, the existing evidence to prove our traditions the intention for me on my page is to just encourage people to do it i'm not here to justify it i don't want to justify it okay. if if somebody is watching and feeling oh something is there that's enough for me if some if this feel okay something is there i want to follow that's enough for me people who don't want to believe will not believe anyway <laughs> <laughs> very beautifully said i i, I think um, some of some some experience i had like something i was talking about and they said which science journal writes it i said science journals were never existing before <laughs> so i can't ensure <laughs> to, to be in science journals but yeah i think um, one thing good i see in your page and you're talking about is it really makes sense for right now people mm-hmm. and i'm really really blessed i would say the current generation gen z people are not asking for any you know proofs they are saying if it works for me it works i don't have to question why i they are not like okay if uh, alexa is talking and giving me an answer they are not code checking the code which code is working can i put a java in it or not alexa is answering me i am fine with that so if a rangoli works for me like what you said they'll straight away do it i think very very blessed to see your intention also in your page and god bless you with many many more ideas to come no i didn't choose bharatiya traditions as my niche because i am an expert or because i know everything about this i am a total newbie in this field i still am uh i had one intention i think that intention intention made me sustain in this field the intention was to encourage people to believe in the dharma encourage people in believing in what our ancestors told i think uh but once i have come here i know how much i can learn from this uh, there is a long way for me to go i'm really excited So we will come to a rapid fire question I think uh, right. these questions are uh, something which we would like to make you uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> Okay not in any other way but uh, we would like to make it uh, more simple uh, yet crisp and uh, don't worry you can say pass So that's one flexibility dharma gives dharma says okay I don't want to answer I don't want to answer let's start Yeah Who's your favorite deity Rama I'll have a one podcast on that. <laughs> do you do upavasa? Yes, on ekadashi. Uh not any specific days? No. Do you remove bindi while you are dressed in jeans? I'll try to avoid jeans in the first place, but sometimes I might remove. 
పెంది గివెన్ అ ఛాన్స్ టు గో టు ప్రీవియస్ ఇతిహాస సేరాస్ రామాయణ అండ్ మహాభారత విచ్ వన్ డూ యూ లైక్ టు గో టు ఓ దట్స్ అ డిఫికల్ట్ పిక్ రామాయణ టు మీట్ యువర్ ఫేవరెట్ గాడ్ yes <laughs> and uh, have you ever read complete version of mahabharat no unfortunately no <laughs> and you have seen and uh, many times heard mahabharata story which is your favorite character abhimanyu without a single okay. thought <laughs> why the entire the in during the war, war sequence right the way he fights as a such a young kid my god it's, it's so heart touching heart welling like i really feel something would have happened so that abhimanyu was saved okay uh, just to see how what kind of a person he would be he would have been in that age only he was he was more capable than arjuna uh, yeah. he would have done so many things i feel yeah but we are fortunate that the lineage continued the mahabharata lineage continued from abhimanyu son only right. so you would have seen right. parikshit and yeah. all um do you see movies yeah total movie buff okay. what's your favorite movie favorite movie there are so many uh kannada dali kannada uh mungar male kaviratna kalidasa yeah <laughs> absolute favorites who's your favorite hero ramcharan and ganesh bangalore or singapore bangalore <laughs> any indian city <laughs> yeah. okay. veg biryani veg pulao pulao yeah does veg biryani exist <laughs> that's up to the individual that's okay don't have to break brains on that i feel <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer if rama your favorite god comes in front of you what is the one question you'll ask him how to get the courage to move out of a city when his father told that your patabishekam is cancelled <laughs> go to the forest now he agreed in like few seconds right what is what does it take how did he do that that i might ha- ask him yeah, i also would like to ask him the same <laughs> like imagine i'm getting a promotion and said fired <laughs> I'm like, I'm like how how will you take it <laughs> this is to another extent only right <laughs> it's like you're gone and that to fired and jailed before corona you would have seen lot of thing everything was offline Mm-hmm. very rarely questions and classes were online so online offline what do you prefer offline offline in person and yes. uh, meeting online okay this connection human connection there online i feel it's like very robotic very robot talking to camera and uh, mm. it's accessible but <laughs> i wouldn't prefer it yeah. there are two important platforms in social media mm-hmm. youtube and instagram yes and there are difference between how they okay. do it and also youtube or instagram youtube YouTube. long form videos yeah when are you starting your channel i don't know <laughs> maybe i i don't have enough you know knowledge to start a, a channel i want to be i want to you know give authentic nice information uh, before i i think you should start there are many uh-huh. people who are looking forward for such content in the platform uh-huh. and there are many i agree but nothing stops in building another temple if we have so many temples so please do it <laughs> thanks yeah. so i'll keep that in mind and <laughs> we'll do it as soon as possible if your kid is born in singapore mm-hmm. will you name him or her in a singaporean name or indian name indian name <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> boy or a girl whom do you want boy boy okay probably to name him abhimanyu or something <laughs> <laughs> so we've been telling addressing you many times shamata mm-hmm. so we always address uh, people with this word which comes from a upanishadic thing and which is given by our gurudev venerable mahamuni srita mahagata who is in nepal he says shamata actually means may peace and tranquility be with you most of the times we think both of them are same mm-hmm. but tranquility is well being well being mentally well being physically well being metaphysically mm-hmm. all things embedded into one word called shamata so when we say shamata we wish you that mm-hmm. and with you uh, working so much on sanatan dharma and ideas you have on sanatan dharma we would like you to have the most highest peace and tranquility thank shamata. you so much and for the work you're doing as a foundation it's amazing and uh, today's generation especially the kids want that kind of education and more power to you keep continuing um yeah and uh, 
one question we would like to ask is we have invited you mm-hmm. you don't know us probably you would have just seen our social presence what made you come here i would want to give some interesting answer to this but i don't know i think uh, ju- just any organization which is doing for dharma interests me and when you invited uh, me as a guest i didn't have two reason i mean one other reason to you know tell no for that so i was yeah thank you thank you very much for that and it was it was a wonderful opportunity for us to have you here also we are blessed to listen to your words no oh, that's uh, yeah. before we end the podcast we always ask one question to every bandhu who comes to us okay and that's a universal question mm-hmm. what is dharma according to you according to me dharma is something that helps the society to sustain that's as simple as that yeah very good thank you very much thank you thank you very very much for coming it's it's our really blessing and i feel like i'm meeting my younger sister oh <laughs> so <laughs> sweet and very happy to see these young minds coming up into the digital world and uh, helping this sanatan dharma to be understood mm-hmm. forget about growing and forget about forcing i would say to understand itself makes it so beautiful and our objective of our foundation is to make people at least get aware of sanatan dharma if they are getting aware that's enough because mm-hmm. it will help them mm-hmm. and they can be in shamata always mm-hmm. thank you thank you for inviting me and i i don't know wha- how you chose me or why you chose me but i'm so grateful that it happened i had wonderful speaking to both you and sandhya thanks to mahagate foundation as well yeah shamata shamata speaks